Hello there. PodLayer is an independent research project which focuses on observing subtle but specific human aesthetic qualia, trying to see what connections can be made regarding their various patterns. This is the focus of PodLayer public experiments as it is comprised of these empirical observations that are the forensic evidence being put forth for the public at large to take a look at and to see what they can make of it. You will be experimenting to see if you can observe certain patterns in physiological cues of the human face that make for subtle aesthetic qualia categories to be noted, including what these cues and category of cues are, how they group together, and what potential import that might have. The Mojo phenomenon is the name given to the discovery that there are 16 specialized innate aesthetic qualia categories of humans that can be observed through the subtle innate physiological cues that people continuously produce. This can be noted with the naked human eye once properly trained. Humans are better at subtle face and body physiological cue identification, such as microexpressions, than computers are, and therefore it is this kind of human lens that is employed in these experiments. This is one of the first three experiments which show you something you can likely already do to some degree without any prior training. Like the experiment of sub versus ob, this uses the second gear of innate human qualia reading, or mojo reading. There are five gears in total, but it is gears one and two that are the focus in the beginning. The lens of your own eyes and the mental faculties within you that give what they see meaning is what you'll be using to make your observations throughout this experiment. The data being used in this experiment are visual samples of faces of a selection of various famous people. The goal is to better understand humans as there are patterns of importance once seen, such as career demographics, as well as relationship patterns in general, and suggest what might drive these things, which merits further investigation. For those interested in seeing what PodLab research has to offer, here is one of the first three initial experiments, which is distinguishing Jez from Zez. We'll be working on distinguishing between natural state emoting and natural state neutralizing. Emoting is any emotive expression that the face makes. It can be angry, it can be um, sad, it can be happy, uh, it can be any number of things, but it is an emotive expression uh, that the face is making. It is activating emotively. Neutralizing is the cessation of that movement, either keeping it still or making it still once it has begun moving. There's a term we'll be using in a lot of experiments, which is natural state and altered state. Natural state means that something is happening with ease and it readily happens and energy is gained. And then uh, altered state is that that is not the case. Although a person can be doing a particular, you know, human maneuver, a physiological, you know, a manifestation of some kind with great skill or habitual use. But what we're looking for is the subtle quality of, um, ease and energy gaining versus um, uh, the slightly um, reaching for uh, doing it and it is energy curbing. And this is something that can be observed uh, physiologically on the surface by uh, how it is manifesting. And we'll be going through some tours to highlight what that looks like. We use something called the midline of the face, which is right underneath the uh, base of the cheekbones. And if the emoting goes easily and readily into the cheeks above the midline, so it goes above the midline into the cheek region up here, uh, that is actually what we call natural state emoting. And then what goes with that is altered state neutralizing. Uh, faces that can do that uh, readily, they go into a reposed or neutralized state, not readily or altered state. And this is called jez. Jez is the combination of natural state emoting and altered state neutralizing. Jez is more things than that, but that's a good place to start. Then you have natural state neutralizing. So the neutralizing the face, that, that maneuver, staying still with, with the emoting is natural and the animating of it is less so. The, the emoting does not go readily and easily into the cheeks above the midline. So that is called Zez. The natural state neutralizing, the altered state emoting, uh, uh, combined is what Zez is, although there are other things that is a good place to start. Important note, neither is better. Both are equally interesting and appealing in their way. We focus on the emotive range because tracking movement is easier than tracking non-movement. This is a good place to start because it is a distinction people tend to find easier as tracking the emotive expressions of other people is something we all do to some extent without any specialized people reading training. All right, let's begin. You want to go to the Rosetta Stone of the Human Soul website. The link is below. 
and you're going to click on the sample surfer program that's in the taskbar or the, the uh, navigation bar. All right, you'll select the following samples to work with. The four Jez First Qualia categories, A grade samples in alphabetical order in tour mode for 100 samples. The four Jez First Qualia categories you need to select will be listed in the description box below. You are to look for the subtle quality of natural state emoting, altered state neutralizing, Jez which is the emoting range radiating up and out from the mouth going readily into the cheeks above the midline of the face but does not readily neutralize this area. These faces have many differences but they will all share this natural state emoting, altered state neutralizing commonality. Click through the 100 samples to see if you can note it. Uh, this usually takes about 2 to 15 minutes but take whatever time feels right to you. If you're able to see these physical object cue distinctions, proceed to the next stage. And so I'll just mention is that uh, with the media that you'll have to look at, we have to work with what is on the internet. So you're going to have to, um, as much as possible, we try to get uh, images where a person is doing an emotive expression and they're doing something more neutralized. But that wasn't always the case in order to get the best quality pictures overall. Um, but uh, that was shot for in general, and you want to use that comparison, which is what does it look like when this sample is having their face in a neutralized position versus in an emotive position? How easily and readily does the emoting go into the cheeks? Uh, although there are some samples where both of the pictures they are not making expression, or both the pictures they are making expression. Uh, but those were uh, uh, kept uh, down as much as possible. And either way, you, you will be able to tell if it is Jez or Zez. Next, you'll need to start a new collage. You'll select the following samples to work with. The four Zez First Qualia categories, A grade samples in alphabetical order in tour mode for 100 samples. The four Zez First Qualia categories you need to select will be listed in the description box below. You are to look for a subtle quality of natural state neutralizing, altered state emoting, which is the emotive range rating up and out from the mouth, not going readily into the cheeks above the midline, but instead this area being readily neutralized. These faces have many differences, but they will all share this natural state neutralizing, altered state emoting commonality. Click through the 100 samples to see if you can note it. Again, take whatever time you feel you need. If you're able to see these physiological cue distinctions, proceed to the next stage. Now for the quiz, you're going to start a new collage. You will select the following samples to work with, the four Jez first uh, quality categories and the four Zez first quality categories, A grade samples, in random order in quiz mode of 100 sample size. Uh, you will choose the values-based versus logic-based buttons. If you see the Jez, natural state emoting, altered state neutralizing, you'll click the values based button. If you see uh, Zez, which is natural state neutralizing, altered state emoting, you'll click the logic based buttons. A disclaimer here, or not a disclaimer, but a, a, an important note is that uh, when this program was first made, there was a combining of the first degree of Podlayer practice, which is the observable physiological cues tracking, and what may potentially be under the hood, psychologically speaking. So um, that's why that's there. But just note that we are only focusing on the first degree of Podlayer practice here, what is visibly observable, which is Jez and Zez, the emotive range of physiological cues that can be seen on the face. When you're ready, Hit surf and then click through, uh, selecting whether or not you think the sample you see has Jez Qualia, in which case you click the bias based button, or Zez Qualia, in which case you hit the logic based button. If you receive a score of 75% or more, you can proceed to the next stage. If not, you can stop the experiment here and you can retake this quiz until you get 75% or greater. Once you've taken the initial quiz here, this is where um, it's up to your personal um, interests and um, inclinations is to if you are not achieving 75% in your first quiz but you find this tracking of these cues interesting then just keep taking the quiz until you get above 75% and you know uh, you should be able to do that with uh, a little bit of training and, and playing with the program. Uh, on the other hand, if you take it the first time, you do not receive the 75% score, then if you want you can stop there and you know totally understandable because that is um, um, for us we're trying to see if you're able to do what we think can be seen here. And on your end, you're looking for, um, can I see what they say? I can see if I look. And so um, uh, the perfect concept was not given to you that you need, uh, and that's totally understandable. And uh, I appreciate you taking the experiment at all. 
Uh, but for those who find it interesting, uh, if you need to take the experiment uh, quiz more than once to get above 75%, feel free to do so. Next, if you're able to do that, we're going to build on top of that a sort of follow-up quiz, which is you're going to do the same thing, except now when you take that first tour, you're going to choose the four Jez second quality categories, which will be listed below, and see if you can see that same natural state of moding, altered state, neutralizing. It's going to be more subtle because the difference in uh, those ranges, uh, whether it is uh, more localized in the mouth area or whether it goes in the cheeks easily, that distinction will be more subtle than it was when comparing the Jez first. They have the uh, uh, highest range, it's easiest to see often, and the Zez first, they have the most natural neutralizing, so it's easiest to see. But you're gonna be doing that same kind of um, uh, flexing with your lens, but you're gonna have to look for something more subtle because it is not as large of a difference, but it's the same difference. So then, same thing, take a tour of the uh, four uh, Zez second quality categories, and then once you've done that, take a quiz trying to uh, distinguish them. And then, it, uh, another thing you can do if you wish, uh, after that, for fun, uh, a few variations. One is that you can uh, take a, a week off or as much time to where the memory of the faces and what they were as far as like what the screen said, that starts to fade. And that will fade quicker than something else, which is the principles. The principles of distinguishing those faces will remain when your memory starts to slip. Okay, that's for everyone. Uh, when it comes to actually like keeping things in your head, um, details tend to go away before the principles go away. So you're going to use that. Come back and just take the quiz. Uh, you can do all eight of the um, uh, Jez uh, quality categories and do like maybe 10, 20 samples just to get like a refresh. And the same thing with the eight Zez quality category samples and then just go right into a quiz and see how well you can do then. That can be kind of fun. Uh, other things that can be interesting is doing like an endurance run. Here we're talking about quizzes that are like about 100 each. Is try building up to where you can actually do a thousand. That'll help build up that muscle. Also, if you were finding it difficult uh, to see things, something that can be helpful is to separate the male and female samples. Uh, if you are looking at a sample in life, you're looking at a person, you can tell if they're male or female. That ability is your lens flexing. Your lens can do many things when looking at humans and trying to see what it's looking at, and that's one that it does almost automatically. But automatic doesn't mean that it's without effort. Your mental uh, faculties, your lens, use that energy. And so if you can remove having to make that distinction, it'll be better. If you say, I'm not gonna make that distinction, I'm just gonna watch the mode of range and how it goes, you'll have to tell yourself to not do that, which will still take energy. So your brain pretty much automatically use energy, it's so used to doing it to tell part male and female, um, and we're, we're biologically you know, hardwired to do that anyway. So if you can remove that, that will free up some processing power, and that may make uh, seeing these subtle cues easier to do. Also, a general theme is that when you're trying to look at certain cues, you have to practice being able to isolate them and sort of tune out um, louder distracting cues. And for example, a face, whether it is male or female, that's a very large cue, and it can be a bit blaring, a bit loud, uh, and, and you're looking for something subtle. So if you actually take it to where your psyche, your, your mental faculties is not having to do that, it can just focus on the more subtle differences between the faces. Also, if you find any of these samples interesting when you're taking the tour, by all means, click on them, uh, go into the internet, see uh, uh, images of them if you like watching some videos of them uh, doing interviews or something, or even in uh, dramatic work or you know artistic work, that's fine too. Inter uh, interviews are better, but still allow your interest in them, um, allow that appetite, that hunger uh, to, to awaken. That's a good thing. Um, that will help uh, sink the cues in because whatever cues you're seeing, in those two pictures, you'll continue to see them in a more you know, uh, expansive portfolio of pictures, uh, Pinterest or Google or whatever. Uh, and then on the same thing with uh, going to video, video is basically just a series of pictures. You know, a series of freeze frames stacked together is what makes the video. Uh, so you'll see these simpler cues that you hopefully are able to see to some extent in these two pictures 
in a you know, larger uh, set of pictures and in video. This isn't necessary to do the experiments that you're doing at this level now, this initial um, orientation level, but it's something that actually comes up later on. And if you're finding an interest in doing that, I just thought I'd mention that you would allow that to flower. That's a good thing. Like all three of the initial experiments, pod layer, at the end of it, you can ask yourself a few questions. Can you see these physiological cues with significant regularity, i.e. 75% or higher? Do you find it interesting to try to make these visual distinctions as an exercise? Is watching humans for subtle cues enjoyable for you? Did you find it interesting that these distinctions are there to be noted? Was there satisfaction felt when you looked for these distinctions with your lens? Your lens was able to find them. Do you think these cues you have now noted might mean something? Are you inclined to look for these cues in people you are seeing going forward to see where and how often these distinctions might continue to show up? Does noting these distinctions arouse a strong curiosity in you to see what other patterns of subtle physiological cue distinctions there might be? If you can answer yes to these questions, you're ready to try further experimentation. After posting your screenshot, feel free to ask any related follow-up questions you have. Any feedback on what the experience was like doing this experiment is appreciated. Thank you.